Now let's focus in on the city of Portland, namely the first steps taken in the wake of the voter approved charter reform. It's a huge deal. It's changing the government structure of the Rose City. Here's a breakdown of what's going to change. Power will be centralized under a city administrator who's overseen by the mayor. That person will be in charge of all the bureaus we're familiar with today. That means city council will be in charge of setting policy, not running the bureaus like they do currently. And council itself will expand to 12 members. Portland will be divided into four districts, and each district will elect three councillors using ranked choice voting. Now, none of this starts right away. The first election under this new structure will be in November of 2024, with terms for the elected officials beginning in January of 2025. The city administrator, they will be appointed by the mayor and then approved by the council. So that likely is not going to happen until 2025 when the new councilors and the mayor, be it Ted Wheeler or someone else, are in place. OK, so those are the structural changes. But one of the first things that needs to be done is to set up an independent 13 member districting commission, which will have the authority to set those geographic boundaries of the four new districts in the city of Portland. Now, members of the commission will need to be appointed by Mayor Wheeler and then confirmed by the existing city council. And they will all need to be Portland residents representing a diversity of race, gender, age, and geography. And by the way, applications to be on that commission are available online right now. We'll have a link in the web article with this story if you're interested in applying. But check it out. There are already concerns over political hijinks, various ways that folks might try to give themselves an unfair advantage when the new city districts are drawn up. That brings us to what happened on Wednesday, where council voted on an ordinance to update the city code with language about that districting commission. It was a unanimous vote, 5-0, but Commissioner Mingus Maps and Dan Ryan were very skeptical, and we wanted to highlight some of their questions. This is definitely what we call the nitty gritty of city politics. So stick with me, though. It's important for those of you who care about the future of the city. And I know that's pretty much all of you, whether you live here or not, you're affected by it. So here's the first issue. As city staff explained, no elected officials or candidates can serve on the districting commission. But Commissioner Dan Ryan wanted to know, and we're paraphrasing a little bit here, but if someone served on the commission, helped draw those districts and decide the geographic boundaries, and then immediately announced they were running for a council seat in one of those districts, wouldn't that kind of be a conflict of interest? The answer from the city's attorney office staff was, if that person planned to run after serving on the commission, it could be a potential conflict of interest, and they would probably need to declare it, but it's not an actual conflict of interest under state law, said as only a lawyer can. Ryan said that answer was a great legal response that does not pass the conflict of interest sniff test. <laughs> Next issue, could the current city council override the commission's decision about how the maps are drawn? Well, the answer is only if the commission fails to adopt a map with a supermajority vote of at least nine of the 13 members of that geography council. If they get at least nine yes votes on the map, council cannot touch it. But if they fail to get nine votes on the map twice, then the most recent proposal that they voted on does go to the current city council for consideration and adoption. Kind of vague, huh? Well, those were the lawyer's words when the question was asked, and we will try to keep getting clarification on that one because it does seem a little bit blurry. Now, it's important to note that the Oregon Constitution requires the political districts to be compact, contiguous, separated by conventional dividing lines, and of equal population. If it doesn't follow those rules, it could be off to court for a challenge. And that equal population requirement leads us to our last issue. The district maps must be redrawn every 10 years, and the deadline is September 1st of 2031, 2041, et cetera. It's time to coincide with the U.S. Census report. But, and here we're paraphrasing an issue raised by Commissioner Mingus Maps, given that the 2020 census data was delayed and a mess, if future census data is delayed, doesn't the September 1st deadline create a risk that the commission won't have the most up-to-date population numbers? To that question, the city staff agreed they should look into it and make sure that the schedules are in alignment for future rounds of redistricting. Now, much of the reform feels a little far away, but the commission still does need to get chosen and relatively soon. They need to get drawing because the four Portland districts need to be finalized by September of this next year.
That's just 10 months away. It needs to be done then to make sure that there's time to educate the voters and the candidates before the 2024 election season gets underway. So there's a lot to do in a relatively short amount of time. Changing a city's government isn't going to be quick or easy. And whether you voted for it or not, we, you, all of us are getting a front row seat to all the action.